Absolutely fucking not. Boom shakalaka ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters around the world. It is your boy, Chris Shul, a.k.a. the Esoteric Noetic, a.k.a. The Chocolate Nubian Soul Brother from Ghana, West Africa. I drop the wisdomatic truth bombs here in Australia, mate. You know you can rely on me because I'm true blue. All I do is I'm told. I'm on team. <laughs> and I took the magic potion. Well, I mean, I identify that I took it because I'm a trans vaccine. But I didn't. And i got to tell you, I'm pretty smug about that. <laughs> Be sure to like this video, subscribe, click on the bell, tell your friends, tell your mom, tell your mamas, drop us the comments, let us know what it is. Let's get it. Let's get down to business in the immortal words of Eminem. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I, I just want to cover some news. I have been seeing all around the world people being censored, people being taken up mainstream platforms for spreading misinformation. I want to say... To all you people, shame on you. Shame on you for spreading misinformation. It's bad. Don't you know you're causing harm when you're telling fibs or telling the truth? I mean, we can't really tell what the truth is this day unless, of course, we listen to our government and we listen to uh, the powers to be because they know what the truth is. Even though they've gotten it wrong so many times, we have to listen to them because uh, they have good intentions and they're trying to do it for the greater good. <laughs> but in seriousness, I have been seeing so many people get taken off of many of these platforms. Strangely enough, I am still here. Maybe it's because I'm the chocolate Nubian. Maybe it's because I'm black. Maybe they're like, oh, we can't take this guy down. It'll make us seem as if we're racist, so we got to keep him up here. But who knows? Ladies and gentlemen, I may not be here for long. That's why you got to follow me. I'm everywhere on the interwebs. You can follow me on TikTok or you'll find me serenading the senoritas. You can follow my podcast where I can speak freely. That's the one platform where I can say the truth without having to worry about being censored. But uh, yeah, on YouTube, I kind of just have to, uh, well, speak as if I'm on team. <laughs> but you guys know that I am not. You guys, I hope, you know that I am the esoteric noetic, that I have been tirelessly fighting against the tyranny that we've been seeing for, well, pretty much since I was a little ankle biter. But as I was saying, I've seen so many people get taken off of YouTube, many of these different platforms. And uh, recently, um, one of my favorite truth speakers, Adam Kakesh, I've had him on this podcast. He was John McAfee's running mate. John McAfee was, in my opinion, the most interesting, brilliant figure probably of the, of the last 100 years uh, in terms of just the things that he uh, achieved and just his swag and entertainment value, but also being a, a great figure standing up against tyranny. And of course, he was he was whacked. He was assassinated. And uh, Adam Kakesh is someone that is very much like him, has been speaking against a lot of the tyranny that we've been seeing going on. And he recently, uh, from what I understand, is no longer able to make content on YouTube, to post content on YouTube. And uh, that pretty much goes for anyone that is even remotely speaking truth in regards to what is going on. And, of course, I can't speak about that because, well, you know, this is what it is. But uh, it truly does seem like I am the last starfighter, ladies and gentlemen, reference to one of my favorite movies as a kid. And I truly feel as if I am probably the only one on YouTube at the moment that has received an innumerable amount of strikes, but I'm still here and has an understanding, a true, deep understanding of what truly is going on. So uh, if you guys want to keep up to date with the truth, then you need to you need to subscribe to The Chocolate Noobs. You need to check out the Crucial Journey podcast, the most conscious podcast in all of the multiverse. You liked that one, didn't you? Oh, all right. So uh, on another note, I recently did a podcast with uh, my friend Adam Duque on a new organization he launched called Inner Help, which is all about getting people to address the root cause of their addiction. Powerful podcast. Highly recommend you guys checking that out. Uh, check us out on Patreon. Also, if you guys really want to support me, um, of course, you don't have to. You can just comment and how I don't know what I'm talking about, how you hate my, my, my accents. You don't think I'm a true blue Australian. How dare you, mate? I'm as awkward as it gets. Don't you know I'm true blue? I'm right. She'll be right, mate. <laughs> but uh, 
But um, if you guys just want to comment, share my videos, that's okay too. But if you guys want to send a donation my way, it'd be greatly appreciated. I'll drop us the cryptocurrencies, you know what it is. Uh, but uh, also, Patreon has just added, as of today, some new feature, feature which allows you to make videos, upload videos directly to Patreon. So I'm going to give that a shot. I think I only have one follower at the moment, you know. So I uh, salute you. Shout out to, uh, to Ryan. Uh, thanks for supporting me. But ladies and gentlemen, if you guys want to support me for the next couple of months, um, it's going to be no fee. I'm actually putting down a halt for any uh, any subscription fees whatsoever. But after that, um, after starting next year, I'm probably going to start it up again. But if you guys just want to subscribe and throw us a donation or support me, it would be greatly appreciated for as little as $1 a month. You can support the chocolate noobs. All right. Now, I want to address the elephant in the room. It seems like a lot of people have been regretting uh, their actions, their behavior as of late in regards to how they behaved uh, during this, uh, you know, the pandemic, which we're still engaged in, which is still very serious, of course. And uh, I recently came across an article, right? And I've also been seeing a lot of people tweeting, a lot of major public figures asking their followers if they regret having taken the magic potion. And uh, I wanted to... Uh, address that, but I feel like I can't really do that justice, um, so I'm going to try as best as I can to navigate through an article I came across uh, from The Atlantic. This is a, a journalist, well, apparently a journalist, it seems like there aren't any real journalists in the 21st century at the, at the moment, um, and if you're a journalist that is not speaking openly about what is going on, I mean, forget the science in regards to the violations of human rights. In regard, And yes, in regards to what's really going on, in regards to, you know what I'm talking about, like the agenda at hand, then you are not a journalist. You need to stop wearing that badge. Even for a lot of the mainstream figures right now, you know, like, I mean, I'm going to call out some names right now. Recently, we've been seeing them post on Twitter, thank goodness for Twitter, uncovering what's going on. But even figures like Tim Sheath, Joe Rogan, Crowder, Stephen Crowder, these are people within leaning more right or centrist, um, they have not been doing the best job exposing what's really going on. Granted, they've been speaking about the violation of rights and so forth, but there are levels to this shit, ladies and gentlemen, and unless, of course, you're on Twitter, Twitter right now, um, Lord praise our savior, uh, Elon Musk. I think it's an amazing thing he's done by buying Twitter and allowing the free speech to take place, even though he's charging... Well, apparently it was twenty dollars a month, and now it's going to be eight dollars a month if you want to get a blue check mark. But it really is worthwhile knowing that we can have this unhinged conversation in regards to what's going on right now. And ladies and gentlemen, come and give us a follow on Twitter. You'll see me battling the momos, um, trying to uh, cast this dream spell that they don't have any idea what's going on. When in reality, it's so unbelievably apparent right now. The point at which it is apparent is so apparent that. If you deny how apparent it is, we know that you're you're caught deep in the dream spell. You are a disingenuous Momo. But anyway, I digress. There are a lot of people speaking about what's going on, but not enough. And I would invite these people to speak harder, even if their voice shakes. Uh, if you take what you're doing seriously, you call yourself a journalist, then you need to start acting like one. Now, granted, I myself, um, you know, I'm posting videos and doing what I can in order to get this stuff out there, get the information out there. But um, I also have other goals, other passions. I, I'm a recording artist, a performer, a singer, dancer. And uh, this this agenda that we're facing has made it very difficult to do a lot of these things because I have been shut out because uh, apparently they don't like the fact that um, I'm a trans backside. They are, uh, they are mis... mis uh, <laughs> well, boom shakalakering me. How about that? <laughs> Misgendering, mis... Boom shakalakering, as in, they do not acknowledge my correct boom shakalaka status. <laughs> anyway, in any event, I came across this article from the, the Atlantic by uh, Emily Oster that apparently thinks we should have some kind of ceasefire when it comes to our acceptance of people that me misbehave during this pandemic, uh, and, and so forth. The title was, Let's Declare a Pandemic Amnesty. And appropriately, absolutely fucking not. 
And here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to come across as vindictive here. You see, a lot of people, let's have a look at our article. A lot of people look at what's happened as just being misinformation. Now, we didn't have all the truth. Oh, look, we were just acting on what we thought was appropriate. No, you weren't. It wasn't, it's not just about the science, you guys. Regardless of what you think and regardless of whether, what your stance is on the efficacy of magic potions and whatever it might be, right? The fact of the matter is, morally speaking, people have been deplorable. People have thought that it was justified to coerce people to take the boom shakalaka. People have been advocating for violations of the Nuremberg Code and then coming up with the most ridiculous arguments that, well, it's not a violation of the Nuremberg Code because it's a public health and safety measure, that somehow forcing someone to, to do something, coercing them, which is the very basis of the Nuremberg Code, it being a no-no, that voluntary consent is essential, is it, it's making the argument that it's acceptable to ignore that because they were doing it for the greater good, which is the most absolutely asinine shit. And I'm finding more and more the people are making these ridiculous arguments, and they somehow expect the people are going to be so stupid that they actually fall for this shit. Things like saying 1 plus 1 is equal to 3, and saying it so boldly that you think people will accept that, that doesn't work. It doesn't work on the chocolate Nubian, and I don't think it works on you guys either. I presume you guys don't fall for that kind of nonsense. But anyway, let's have a look at what Emily had to say in regards to this. Essentially, she's calling for an amnesty, right? Fundamentally, because people didn't know. Okay, so check this out. She went on to say, the people who got it right, for whatever reason, may want to glow. So she's talking about the magic potion, all right? This is her article. I don't necessarily agree or disagree with what conclusions she might be drawing, but just listen to this. Those who got it wrong for whatever reason may feel defensive and retrench into a position that doesn't accord with the facts. All of this gloating and defensiveness continues to gobble up a lot of social energy and to drive the culture wars, especially on the internet. These discussions are heated, unpleasant, and ultimately unproductive. In the face of so much uncertainty, getting something right had a, had a hefty element of luck. And similarly, getting something wrong wasn't a moral failing. Treating pandemic choices as a scorecard on which some people racked up more points than others is preventing us from moving forward. I don't believe so. I don't believe so because where is she's looking at this in terms of, oh, I didn't have all the information. Oh, it was a, it was a luck of the draw that you got it right and, uh, you know, I got it wrong. No, it wasn't. I mean, we can look at this in two ways. Most of the people who were advocating for the lockdowns, were at, they're advocating for boom shakalakas and so forth, were advocating for it on the grounds that it was going to address a problem. It was going to mitigate uh, risks and so forth, right? That's, it's never justifiable to coerce people into doing things like that. The rights of the individual are not determined from the generosity of the state. They are not determined from momos deciding that it's a good idea, that it's going to save millions of lives. They are determined from unenable individual rights. They come from the hand of God. This is something that has been sacrosanct within the United States. This is the very culture of the United States, but also the Western world, the idea of human rights. But for some reason, over the last few decades, we moved into this realm where people do not respect individual rights. They believe in the concept of safety. They believe in the con concept of risk mitigation. Governments essentially being able to Take away your rights in the interest of trying to achieve goals. That kind of thinking is never acceptable. And the problem I've had is that the vast majority of people, they, because they believe that the science showed that it was going to lead to X and Y, that it was going to, whether it was wearing a mask or taking a magic potion, they have argued in violating individual rights, locking people up in their homes, violating the Nuremberg Code, violating the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. These things which are sacrosanct within any kind of society that believes in freedom, which is synonymous with human rights. It's freedom from aggression. And these people are essentially criminals, but also treasonous momos. And the idea that you thought, based on the information, was the right choice, means that you truly have not learned your lesson. That you think it's somehow justifiable to do this, even if you were right in terms of this leading to a greater outcome. I'd still be making the argument if the evidence had shown that, according to her, that this thing was, not a, was, was a great idea. It wouldn't matter. If you kill someone, if you rape someone, and it saves a thousand lives, it doesn't make it right. But the vast majority of people in, in this world seem to think it does, and that is the underlying problem. 
And her entire article is justifying this kind of behavior. And look, I haven't even addressed the real elephant in the room here. The fact that all of this information in regard, and this is not, I'm not saying X or Y, but in regards to what is going on, it has been readily available. The problem is that the vast majority of people haven't wanted to listen to the other side. Granted, there's been this massive censorship. The vast majority of people have just blindly listened to what their governments, what these people have told them. Now, granted, there has been a lot of coercion. There's been a lot of lies that have been perpetuated by the establishment. And it's understandable that can, people can make wrong decisions. I understand that. But... Given the fact that people were so hell-bent on pushing these boom shakalakas, on pushing these lockdowns, on forcing these mandates, that is inexcusable. Your lack of information does not justify your violations of human rights, of human liberty. That being said, once again, this information was readily available. And it would serve you well to realize the fact that because you have not only disregarded people's basic human rights, but you have so been, you've been so quick to ignore an other, a, a, another perspective because it wasn't in line with what the mainstream media was telling you when, quite frankly, I think all the information regards to what was going on has been blatantly obvious in your face for people that actually bothered to go and look at the source material, but instead they just relied on what their governments were putting out there. So look, personally, I think on one front, it's, it's never excusable to sacrifice people's rights, and on the other front, in terms of not having information that was luck of the drawer, in terms of who was going to get it right, complete and utter rubbish. People that actually bothered to do their research knew what was going on. People that just relied on the status quo, what their governments were telling us, believed that these people wouldn't lie to us. Of course you got it wrong, because most of you people, unfortunately, don't really care to question what your governments are telling you and haven't realized that this stuff it has happened time and time again. History's prologue. This is not the first time we've seen this shit in the last century. 1930s. I mean, have a look at the things that were going on. Governments advocating for forced measures, mandates, or advocating for separating people because it was for the greater good. Same kind of tactics are used time and time again. And people that don't learn from their history are doomed to repeat it. But anyway, uh, Emily goes on to make the case for why we need amnesty. Why we need forgiveness for those of the, for those that have essentially forced us to lose our jobs, have forced us to sacrifice our careers, that have forced many of us to suffer in more ways than I can openly say. You need to go on Twitter if you want to find out what other ways people have suffered. But because of this, because she didn't know that it was acceptable, well, I'd say that we need to be doubling down. And we need to be calling for these people to essentially face justice. Figures like Dan Andrews, that is up for re-election here in Australia, I think it's this month, needs to be facing some kind of a tribunal for human rights violations. The idea that he's even up for re-election is an absolute joke. Many of these figures like Fauci, many of the presidents and prime ministers around the world, and many people that were so quick to want to call people out, for violating lockdown curfews, somehow thinking it's okay because they're good citizens to dob people in because they're expressing their human rights, because they decide to go and protest against violations of their human rights. People that were so immoral, morally vague, and had the turpitude to think that it was justified to force people to stay in their countries, that the government had every right to lock people up in their countries, in their homes, because it was trying to mitigate risk. If this had been some personal decision from individuals, from pr private businesses to make these decisions themselves, based off of the lack of information they had, that would have been unfortunate, that it would have been their right. But the fact that so many people were willing to incite these governments to actually bring about these judgments was never acceptable. These governments do not have the right to interfere, interfere in your personal lives. Like the idea of having governments interfere with what you can wear in public, and I understand that people think somehow governments have the right to interfere in public space. If it's a situation where it is truly a public area of subject matter, like whether or not we decide whether we go to the moon or we focus on addressing issues in regards to people that are lacking 
resources and so forth, we decide what air we focus on, that's a public issue. But any issue that, that crosses into the realm of people's bodily integrity, people's ability to decide how they live their lives provided they are not harming anyone, that's not a public issue. And the fact that people around the world have thought it's justified to have governments coerce businesses to decide what they can do in their businesses when they're not harming anyone directly. To have governments decide whether or not you can you can leave the country, whether or not you can even enter public spaces, go to the beach. We've had we've had police officers that have wrestled women to the ground for not wearing masks. This is the kind of insanity that we've seen over the last few years. And the fact that these moments want to call for an amnesty, fuck no. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to be calling for pe these people to go to court to face trials. And I say this not because I'm a mean person. I mean, I'm certainly not a nice person. I'm not the kind of person that is going to be nice if people have treaded on me. I'm all for compassion, second chances. But the problem is that these people are not learning. These p people do not learn from their mistakes if there is no repercussion. Unless, of course, people feel the weight of their moral turpitude, they will just repeat this again. And mark my words, we are going to see this kind of behavior again. The next thing you're going to hear is more lockdowns for climate change. It's definitive. No, we're right this time. We're 100% certain. No, we're 100% certain that this is going to save the world. You have to listen to us this time. And all the arguments you make in the past, like we've seen this before. We saw this in the 1930s. We saw this in 2020. It's different. It's different. Unless, of course, people really feel the ramifications of their actions, realize that if you call for this kind of stuff, incite for the, viola for the violation of people's human rights, that you're going to end up in jail and you're going to end up facing justice. Unless people fear that, feel not the potential consequences of not getting the science right, but the reality of violating people's inalienable rights. This is how morality is supposed to work. People always think in terms of intentions. I'm trying to good, do good. It's going to lead to X and Y. This is what all the leaders were saying, all the rulers, all the officials that, well, it's going to save lives. I care about human, li human lives, not human rights. The whole idea of human rights is about your life, the fact that you have a life to pursue, the pursuit of happiness. If we simply sacrifice that because of our ideals and what we think is going to be good, well, we lose our freedom, and eventually we lose our lives. There's no point living your life if you're spending all of your time locked at home under the will of some kind of tyrant. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, if you guys want to stay up to date with what is going on, please check us out on Twitter. Check us out on Patreon. Check out the links below. Uh, you can obviously tune into my podcast. I'm going to start doing podcasts more focused on what is going on. I've taken a shift in recent times because obviously a lot of the content that I speak about is going to be censored if I put it on certain platforms. But I've decided, uh, courtesy of some advice I got from some friends, to perhaps I'm just going to do some snippets on YouTube. If you guys want to listen to the full podcast that I'll be doing from here on out, that are going to be more focused on the real great issues that we are facing right now that if you are not aware of, you need to get your head out of the sand. If you guys want to know about that, well, um, you have to subscribe to my podcast, The Crucial Journey, the most conscious podcast in the multiverse. And I uh, would really appreciate, once again, if you guys want to support me by dropping us the cryptocurrencies, sharing this, telling your mom, telling your friends, you know what it is. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, remember there are three things that cannot remain hidden for long. Plant yourself like a tree beside the river of truth and say nay to the tyranny. We need to have that Kanye energy where we say Fuck no, I'm not going to let you take me down. We need to have that Martin Luther King spirit where we do not care about the consequences if we are doing something that is inherently right. Move in passion, rest in reason. Allow the animating force to work through you, ladies and gentlemen. Allow that Christed light to light up your spirit. And remember that regardless of what people say, regardless of what people do, regardless of what society is preaching, that if you believe something, if you believe something is right inherently, you know it within your heart of hearts, speak it. Even if your voice shakes, just don't speak it on YouTube. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, 
Until next time, kisses, hugs, booty spanks. Peace out. Keep it real. Chris Shul. Ow! Like this notion of liberty, for example. What is liberty? And I think that concept of the will is very important. What the? Who says you can't build muscle on a vegan diet? What's it like being a, a hottie in the vegan community? <laughs> Bitcoin will not work as digital gold. Engineering, technology, these arts of humanity, they are magic. Everyone deserves the same uh, uh, chance, the same treatment, the same respect. Flooded with war, history's littered with body scar, trying to settle the score and maintain it on camera.